which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee and is commended in holy writ to be honorable among all men and therefore is not by any to be enterprised nor taken in hand unadvisedly, lightly or wantonly but reverently, discreetly, soberly and in the fear of God duly considering the causes for which matrimony was ordained First, it was ordained for the increase of mankind according to the will of God and that children might be brought out in the fear and nurture of the Lord and to the praise of his holy name. Secondly, it was ordained in order that the natural instincts and affections implanted by God should be hallowed and directed aright, that those who are called of God to this holy estate should continue therein in pureness of living. Thirdly, it was ordained for the mutual society help and comfort that the one ought to have of the other both in prosperity and adversity into which holy estate those two persons present come now to be joined therefore if any man can show any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together let him now speak or else hereafter forever holds his peace Wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together according to God's laws in the holiest state of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her so long as ye both shall live? I will. Wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband to live together according to God's law in the holiest state of matrimony? Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health and forsaking all others keep thee only unto him so long as ye both shall live? I will. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? I do. I, Michael, take thee, Susan, to my wedded wife. I, Michael, take thee, Susan, to my wedded wife. Well, if that parson's keeping up the schedule, we'll just be about exchanging vows. Eh? The wedding, lad, the wedding. I, Susan, take thee, oh, yeah. uh, what's his name? Just Michael, I think. Take thee, Michael, to my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, the better for worse, for richer for poorer. Where do you learn all that rubbish? Oh, I've been to a few wedding ceremonies in my time, Jack. Words like that stick in your mind. Stuck in my flaming gullets. For better for worse, for richer for poorer, sickness and in health. Right? Right. Right. When I had my bad leg and I was in hospital, if it was a toss-up between me and Bingo, no contest, it were flaming Bingo. I wonder if she's going to say she'll obey him. Nah, they kicked that into such a long time since. No, some women have it put back. I think I would. She said that, I know. How a Vera stood next to me and said it out loud, top of a voice, in a church. So he says to her, give us that car. And she does. Some hopes. That lady's a bit sedate, a bit quiet. Melbourne's neither one thing nor the other. Sydney's great. It's a bit big, a bit expensive. Now, Perth's your best bet, mate. Plenty going on, great climate. But, uh, well, aren't you going through it a bit, though, you know, with, uh, with unemployment and all that? Oh, yeah. But nothing like here. Anyway, we're after mechanics. You get a job, OK? And after a couple of years of hard work like you put in here, you won't know how to spend your money. I thought I was going to spend all my time swimming. That's <laughs> plenty of that, mate. Hey, what's that beach you go to? What's it called? Um... Bondi beaches in it? No, Bondi's in Sydney. My territory's mainly south of Perth, uh, Mandurah, Yelling Up, Margaret River. So I found myself this nice little place in Fremantle, and any slack day, I'd sling that towel in the back of the car and off to Cottesloe Beach. It was better than Bondi, anyway. Oh, shut up, will you? Oh, look, mate, I didn't come here to talk about Australia. I want to see how much things have changed here so I can tell the Poms back home how lucky they are to got out of it. How do you fancy taking the afternoon off and showing me the sights? Uh, can't today, mate. I'll tell you what, though, if you call for Gail about 2.30, I'm sure she'll jump at the chance, if you don't mind a stinking of chips, though. <laughs> it's OK by me. Uh, fancy another warm beer? It's the uh, only sort I like. <laughs> Did you change your mind? I think Peter must have said the right thing. Don't know what it was, but something clicked. Good. 
You ready over there? A pound, remember? Peter, you've had it. I should have called her. Oh, come on again. Uh, come on. Yeah, the bride and groom are on the move. Our oh, smugglers in with you while I'm there. Don't blame me, Vera. I didn't send invitations out. Reception guests, your cars, please. Hey, Gloria, uh, is that boyfriend of yours still hanging around? Steve, you mean? I hope not. Well, uh, if you feel that there's a gap in your life that you won't fill in. No, thanks, Terry. Men are off the menu at the moment. Well, we're not all the same, you know that. I know. Some are worse than others. <laughs> hey. Hiya. Bye, Hiya. Miss Jack, and put money in the tail. Oh, hey, I'll be back. <laughs> what was it like? Oh, she looked lovely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll never guess. Ken came to give her away. Oh, he did? Yes. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. did, yeah. you know. Oh, that oh. summer, I'm glad to hear. Yeah. Hey, mind you, should have seen them all scrying. Oh. Bride and Deirdre oh. and Emily. I thought she was still in her foot of all. <laughs> so, on behalf of the bridesmaids, and I don't know which half I like the best, <laughs> I'd just like to say thanks to Mike for all of this and offer our sympathies to him, oh, and his beautiful bride, for having to leave this smashing knees up and dash off to bore him Barbados. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? Oh, well... Anybody wants to make them an apple pie bed, I'll give you the address. Only cost about 1,500 quid to get there and back. <laughs> oh, yes. <clears throat> well, I've got uh, one or two messages to read out, but before I do, I'd like to call on Mr. Kenneth Barlow, the... Uh, father. Thank you, Elizabeth. The father of the bride, to say a few words. Mr. Kenneth Barlow. Well, uh, this comes as something of a surprise. But uh, I would like to say this. Today is my daughter's day. And I'm quite sure she'd like me to say thank you to everybody for coming along and making it so special. Circumstances, uh, unhappy circumstances being what they were, I haven't shared Susan's life, or Peter's, anywhere near as much as I would have liked. After more years apart than I care to remember, we, we came together again a, a short while ago. And now, all too soon, it's almost time again for parting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends, I know you'll all join with me in hoping that the future will be very... very kind to both of them. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. Help get the dust out of me, throat. It really is a shambles around here, isn't it? Ian, you're talking about the town I love. I am a bit outspoken, aren't I? But you do need it, really. You don't rate me all that high, do you? I never said that. You didn't have to, I could tell. Is it getting any better? Am I growing on you? <laughs> a bit. Good. Brian was talking early on about bringing you all out to Australia. You'd love it. You really would. There's something missing here that you get more than enough of out there. And you know what it is? Go on. Excitement. You don't get much excitement, do you? Not a lot, no. You really would love it out there. <laughs> is that right? You're looking so and so farming. Well, they couldn't get in at Clacton. <laughs> hey, it's a bit overrated, isn't it? All that sun and sand and sea. Ah, not a haggis in sight. Hey, you don't actually eat that stuff, do you? Well, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't even know when it fit me. It's the same with us Geordies in Newcastle Brown. I cannot stand the stuff. <laughs> well, so they said, come on, two girls and four fellas, eh? <laughs> I've been waiting for you. I never knew 
you? Well, you want the best man, don't you? <laughs> but you best start with it. Oh, listen, I'll buy you a drink to tell you. Well, he'll buy you one. It's all of him. Lovely. <laughs> Come on. Who are you, anyway? Don Lester. Alan Mikes. Who are you? Audrey Potter. Oh, no, listen to me. Audrey Roberts. I keep forgetting I'm married. But... Well, that is fine by me. Now, which is the old man? Oh, he's the... Um... Oh, never mind. Come on, let's talk about you. <laughs> I love wedding receptions. People come from all over the place, never met each other in their lives before, yet in no time they're the best of friends. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> she a cheeky madam, that Audrey. Have you seen her just pick that Don fella up? <laughs> I did, love. I was after him myself. You weren't. Now, let's see. Who else do I fancy? Jessica's married Pete and because she forgot Susan's She gave me a pound to let her. But that'd be we're rearing a right one here. <laughs> fancy another drink? Yeah, why not? Do you know, I'm actually beginning to enjoy myself. Susie and I used to swap boyfriends, you know, so I'll give you my number whenever you're ready. Right. Hey, Cheryl, I didn't ask you here to chat up my husband. Oh, hear that, my <laughs> husband. <laughs> uh, excuse me, mate. I uh, just wanted to thank you for coming. I came for Susie's sake. <laughs> I realise that, but uh, thanks all the same. I've lost her. You haven't lost her. You've made her happy. That's not losing her. Ah! Yeah! Hey, listen. Who's going to play in the Australian cricket team, then? Mate? <laughs> when did you get these? Oh, I picked them up this afternoon. I think he's right, you know. Well, this is the place. You serious, then? Oh, I'm seriously thinking about it, yeah. Anyway, love, it's what we want to change. I don't know. A, a bit of, uh, a bit of, um... What? Excitement? Yeah, a bit of excitement. That's what we want, innit, eh? That's what we all want. A bit yeah. of excitement. Yeah! Come on, then. Come on. Punch. <laughs> 